what is the prolonged silent treatment? So we all know what a silent treatment is, right? It's when someone completely goes silent and won't talk to you and won't address a situation or shuts down and walks away and is silent. Sometimes a narcissistic person will do this for an extended period of time. What it basically is, in my opinion, is a discard without leaving. It is goes from, what did I say here? It goes from complete silent treatment into utter rejection. They will not re-engage no matter what you do or how long of a time goes or the normal patterns don't apply, right? Which other narcissists follow. So the narcissistic silent treatment is a means of control. It's a means of control and a way to show you they're the boss, to show you they're in charge, to show you they are displeased with you and to punish you in the most frustrating and painful way they possibly can without it being illegal, right? So they know, a narcissistic person knows that if they don't talk, it's going to make you react. And if you react, what are you giving them? Tons of supply. Remember, I can't say it enough. The narcissistic person is not only after the positive supply. They may tell you that they hate drama. They don't want your negativity. They can't stand when things are dramatic, but they love it. They eat it up. They need it. They need that attention. They need that affection, that, that energy. They need your focus. They need your life to be about them, not about your own things. My name is Lisa Colucci, and I am here to help you recover from, understand, and heal from, transform your life after toxic relationships and relationships with narcissistic people. This is a discard without leaving. When they prolong it for weeks and weeks and weeks and even months, right, where they prolong the silent treatment, where they shut down and never come back. Let's put it that way. The mask never goes back on and they're never nice again. There is no more love bombing. It's just silent treatment and then grunting or, or minimal speech to you or total dismissal. What they're saying is, yeah, I don't really care. I never did because I don't have empathy. They're saying, I don't care. And I don't have the energy that it takes to put that mask back on because I don't care because I can go somewhere else and get the other kinds of supply I want, or because I don't even really need it anymore. Sometimes narcissists are just so toxic and so full of their own yuck, right? Like in such negative people that they don't even really need the positive supply anymore. They just want you around to do the laundry or want you around to do whatever it is you do for them. Like don't want to bother to leave the relationship and go be on their own because frankly, this gives them the attention and the supply that they need and they don't have to do much. It's an effortless way of being in a relationship without actually being in the relationship. Does that make sense? So it's rejection and it is, but here's the thing. It's not about you. This is their toxic pattern and toxic way of relating in a relationship. It's not about you. This is their toxic pattern and toxic way of relating in a relationship. And I think that's interesting when they discard, but don't leave. That is one lazy narcissist, right? <laughs> Where they don't even have the energy to leave and go find new supply. They're just going to keep reusing the same old worn out supply because you're not a worn out supply. You're an amazing person, but the energy you're giving them is pretty worn out and tired, right? And you may feel worn out and tired and you may feel like driven into the ground. In fact, is that what you feel? Have you experienced that? And oh my gosh, have you had this happen? Have you ever had someone give you the silent treatment? My guess is yes. What did you feel? What did you notice? Let me know in the comments because these are important things to talk about. It helps to get it out and to express what you felt because guess what? You were not listened to. And my guess is if you did feel things from having the silent treatment done to you, and you tried to talk about them later, you were yet again shut down and nothing was listened to. You were not validated in your feelings about what it felt like to have that silent treatment done to you, correct? It makes you feel insignificant. That's its purpose because you know what you are to a narcissist? I'm sorry, my friends, you're insignificant to the narcissist. The only significance is themselves. We have to remember that the only person they see as significant is the almighty self that they exist in. Their ego is all that's significant to them.
It's sad, but it is true. All right. They're also doing this to make you suffer. There are a heck of a lot of sadistic, narcissistic people out there who really do enjoy the power that other people's suffering gives to them. I have this belief and I've seen it where narcissistic people will take their own pain, force it onto someone else and let them feel it by inflicting the same pain that they had on the other person. The old hurt people hurt people, right? At, but for real, okay, inflict it upon someone else and then watch them suffer. And it's almost as if they're puppeting their own pain. They are vicariously living that pain out through you, but they're in control of it. And being in control of it gives them a heck of a lot of power. It's not real power, okay? It's power toward the egotistical mask that they're wearing. It's power that reinforces the delusion of who they believe they are. That's all it is. Okay. We have to stop letting them have the power. And that's what we mean by supply. Okay. We're not saying you're a supply. When we talk about things like this in videos, what we're saying is the energy that you give to them, the things they're pulling from you supplies their egotistical mask and the delusion of the life that they believe or they want you to believe is real. They're creating a need for you to people, please. When you have the silent treatment done for a lot of people, not everyone, for a lot of people, what happens is they get so uncomfortable with the silent treatment happening that they then will do anything to make it stop. They will stop being angry. They will turn the completely turn the other cheek, right? Like they will be like, okay, I'll just be nice. They will start doing things for the narcissist. Bids for attention, bids for affection start happening. Sometimes people beg and plead, please, please talk to me. You know, sometimes people get really sweet and soft. So the narcissist gets all that gushy supply too. Sometimes people, I mean, this, this is, sometimes people get reactive, but there are some people who go into people pleasing and fawning. All right. And when that happens, <laughs> right. That is playing into the people pleasing codependent traits you might have if that is you. All right. And the silent treatment is an ultimatum. That silent treatment is do it or else you will get this. And they will prolong it based on how much they feel like punishing and how much they feel like controlling. So it really depends on the situation and the narcissist there. But I mean, is this familiar? Have you had that happen? Are you more of the people pleasing type where, you know, you have gone into the fawning response and tried to force the narcissist to talk? And I don't mean force, like, uh, I mean, do anything, right? Just to get the good side of them back, right? If you have done that, I mean... This can be something that is useful for your healing. You are a person who has done that and you find that that is your tendency. You may want to talk to someone about how, how to function differently, how to use the information that you got from being with that toxic person to make sure it doesn't happen again in your life and to transform parts of your life. So that's a place if you need coaching or group coaching or peer support, mostly coaching or group coaching for that one, I would say, because it really is getting deep and, and and real with yourself about that part. Check out the information in the main description of every video because there's info there on how to find that, okay? Important, this is a pattern. Yes, it's a pattern of how narcissists behave, especially when they prolong the silent treatments and sometimes they get longer and longer, okay? This pattern has nothing to do with you. Let, let me repeat, the pattern of narcissistic manipulation has nothing to do with you. It is not about you. OK, they're making you think it's about you. They are controlling everything so that you have to change the way you act in relationships, thus making you take accountability for what's so. I have another right. question from you. It's not about is this you. content this working for you. Do you guys like this kind of, of conversation and this kind of discussion? If so, hit the thumbs up were and subscribe. <laughs> OK, where they would take their toys and go. You know what I mean? So, yeah, this is their toxic pattern. Remember that this is not you. So there's, here's a hard point. When they have given you silent treatment and it's going on for months, understand something. They no longer have need for your supply. Yes, they're getting supply from you, but they no longer have need for any other kinds of supply from you, at least in this point in time. That hurts. That hits you right where you don't want to feel it. I know. However, if we can face that 
and realize you are worth so much more than that to yourself, to others, to the world. Okay. You're not here to be somebody else's punching bag, even emotionally. Okay. You're not here to have somebody treat you like this. It's sort of like if somebody shows you what you mean to them, believe it. Okay. Believe it. Don't think you can change the narcissist. Don't think you can bring back the good times. Don't think that the good times were anything more than love bombing because they weren't. All right. That was a narcissist in a mood, in a mood to be that way, not feeling and being that way with you. Okay. And still, it's not about you. It's about them. This is how they are in relationships. Understand that if they are at this point, you might want to start thinking about your own safety, your own health, and what you can do for your life from this point forward. Finding other focuses to begin with. Let them be silent. Okay. It's much nicer. You're not talking, you know, and just go do your thing. Just go enjoy yourself. Now, I'm not talking about when you're in unsafe situations. I'm talking about when you are physically safe, okay, and you have the means and the capacity to get away. All right. Or if you cannot get away, how to find a, and create a life for yourself that kind of pushes them to the back burner. And so you have this annoying, well, silent narcissist, whatever. You have like 50 friends you talk to all day or a friend or a social group or a volunteer organization or whatever, wherever you want to focus your energy. OK, it's about helping yourself through this and not turning to this toxic person for the relief from their stupid silent treatment, all right? Um, it's really childish behavior and it is incredibly toxic. It is so painful to people. It creates the feeling of invisibility in a, per in a person who's receiving it. It creates the feeling of a need to fix it. It creates, silent treatment is, it gets into your skin, it gets in, right? It gets in your head. And I don't know, when you're not listened to, what's the first thing you wanna do? I mean, some people wanna react with anger. So then you get reactive. And do you want to spend your life angry because some fool thinks that they can be silent and it means anything, right? It's kind of, it's kind of, we have to disarm the power. And by doing that, by taking away the power, because it doesn't affect you quite as much, even a little bit, then you can start to see things differently and start to improve your life.